Hi everyone, my name is Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. And today I'm going to show you something amazing. And uh, as you're aware, if you've not seen my last video on the Super Tune, the ST102, I took you through series of modifications that you can help to improve on this budget Acromat refractor. As you can see, there are some people absolutely impressed with the results, particularly with the focuser. Such a main upgrade, it really is outstanding. Other than the other things I've done to this optical tube, as really has helped to improve on its performance, which shows to you guys and girls and everyone else that even with basic equipment, you can help to improve on its performance. And okay, you're not gonna get color-free uh, images compared to an ED and, or an Apple, but I must admit, I'm absolutely amazed on the results so far. I'm going to share this idea out and I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys and girls and everyone else that this is not my idea, okay? I'm going to give a big thank you for Bortle 6 Astrophotography. Please check out his ch channel. He's got a YouTube channel and he's got some good content in there and uh, if you've not seen his channel please check it out in the link below and I must admit he's been looking through my videos he suggested a fantastic improvement on this ST102 now I've never thought about this I've when he was describing on how well this uh, this modification improves on this telescope. I was a bit dubious at first. And again, I'm like, like everyone else, I don't like to invest in a lot of money if I know the project is not going to work. But Bortle 6 Astrophotography persuaded me in a way and said, look, Marty, please do this modification. You will not be disappointed. So I've done what he said and I thought okay we'll try it out what this modification is I'll we'll take a closer look all right and show you what I've got so if you're interested and you want to find out more about this new modification for the ST102 please hit a like button please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notifications bell by clicking that bell, make sure you click on all on the scroll up and you should be notified for any new videos that I publish out very soon. So to that on, with Bolt 6 Astrophotography highlighting this fantastic idea, I've gone for the plunge and we're going to try this ST102 out and show to you, to, and show to you all does this modification work? So, if you're interested and you've got this telescope and you want to find out more, please keep watching and let's do this. So, we take a closer look from what I've been recommended from Bolo 6 Astrophotography and he's recommended me this product for the SE 102 but Siv Bonnie is the company it's a Chinese company and uh, they do a lot of budget style astrophotography equipment and what we have here is a photo reducer and field flattener and the um, this product is actually designed for the 102 F7 ED refractor. Now this is the model is is SV193. So SV193 is the product. 
Now this is designed for the 102. They do other variants which is for a 70 millimeter ED F6 and there is a one for the 80 F7 ED refractor. So these are work, these focal reducers, field flatteners work for the ED Apple uh, type telescopes. Now the price for this costs around about £119. Depending where you are in the world, the prices may vary. I managed to get this on a March spring sale from Amazon for £101. So I got a reduction. Again, prices will vary from time to time. Obviously, inflation rates always going up and down. And so it may be cheaper or may be expensive in your local area. However, as you can see in the box, well made box, well packaged, foam lined. And I must admit, I'll do like how to put the foam lining to protect the product. As you can see, very lightweight, probably weigh around about 200 grams at the most. It's got dust caps and then it tells you what it is. We'll check out and as you can see, the elements, darkened glass, very good optics in there, very good multi-coat in there, which is very impressive. I noticed that this is a two-piece focal reducer. So you can use this separately on different type of uh, focuses. So if you've got not much inward travel, then you can take this off and get the, the focal reducer to focus in more, a little bit better. However, he did say, Bottle 6 did say to me, use this adapter all right for the st102 so it's a two-piece smoker reducer very well threaded i must admit it's aluminium ionized construction the uh this is just an adapter there's no lens element but this is that natural lens element itself all right so you've got a good multi coat clear aperture decent for a half crop sensor Canon 600D for example it may fit a full frame I'm not too sure but again comes in two pieces and this is just the adapter all right and he says use the adapter with the ST102 so so far very impressive with the results with the optical quality and uh, the coatings are quite beautiful to be honest with you for its price so the good thing is this can fit directly onto a t-ring now bear in mind that this only fits an m48 t-ring it does not fit the t42 or known as the t2 thread right which is normally commonly found on a lot of half crop sensor so highly recommended to use a standard M48 T-ring for a DSLR camera, clips on there, and then this winds all the way through, and I must admit, very nice. So you got a fixture, fixed, permanently fixed, with no flexure, and uh, the adaption. I'm going to use a contrast booster filter, which is great for eliminating the colour fringing. This fits nicely on there, on the filter adaption on this adapter. Now I don't know if this fits, if you take this off, I'm going to take this off and check does the 2 inch filter fit the actual focal reducer itself. So we're going to remove this adapter and see if that fits that as well 
and again as you can see there it does it fits perfectly so yeah two-piece format focal reducer and fuel flattener and they both fit nicely with the border contrast booster filter and again this will fit a lot of two inch format filters without a problem with this kit so so far I'm actually quite impressed with the results I've got all right so I'm really excited on how this Civ Bonnie 0.8 times focal reducer fuel flattener this upgrade will speed up my existing ST102 to F from F5 down to F3.9 that was, was, that was quoted from Bottle 6. He said that that will work. All right, so F3.9 will achieve focus on that telescope quite comfortably with the standard focuser. And uh, I can't wait to try this out. All right, I'm really excited. So fingers crossed, see what we get so far. So everyone, before we start, it's a good idea to check out the field of view calculator. Now, this is at Astronomy Tools, and uh, that's the website there. Now, what I'm a bit dubious about this focal reducer field flattener from Civ Bonnie is that I'm a bit concerned of way, uh, because my refractor, the ST102, is F5 ratio it's very short focus refractor and the biggest concern is would I be either under sampling or over sampling so what I was going to do is I'm going to pick out an example so like M13 Hercules Cobular Cluster in here what I will do is then select the type of telescope and uh, it'll take a while, there it is Skywatcher 102 it's already set the focal length 500 millimeters the aperture I'm now going to select the camera now this is very important when you are choosing a field flattener or focal reducer you need to match it with your camera well, let me just give it that so as you can see as we scroll down I'm going to use uh, my Canon 600D it already picks your resolution and pixel size for you now the Civ Bonnie focal reducer and field flattener is a 0.8 times so we select that and there as I stated before that this will speed up the optics on the ST102 to 3.92 so we'll round it off to 3.9 now this is the bit I'm concerned about now the resolution will determine if you're under or over sampling so in this picture there we are looking for a factor of 1 to 2 ideally so between the value of 1 and 2 is the ideal pixel size resolution for your setup as you can see there I'm all I'm under sampling so that means because I'm over the value of 2 it means that my my stars when I'm going to take an image the stars are going to appear blocky and square so I'm a bit concerned uh, on the results so that's what I'm a bit worried about at the moment so as we got there is a factor of over two slightly over two may make my images under sampled so now if the value is less than one 
then it'll be over sampled so mine will be under sampled which means they'll be blocky and square if it's over sampled it means that your stars will be bloated and blown out of proportion it's very crucial that you pick the right camera to suit the field flattener and your given telescope people over skip this and ignore this and then they wonder why the images are not so great and they get weird uh, pattern stars so this is what I was concerned about and I was like should I really take the risk and get this field flattening focal reducer because I'm under sampling there however Bottle 5 astrophotography says if you're using the DSLR camera you don't need to worry about it this will also depend if we check now as you can see I will just take the check the view you can see in there the view there we've got a wide field of view and M13 is quite small so I got a huge field of view for starters so with that it's actually made the 102 to a 400 millimeter uh, focal length with that Civ Bonnie focal reducing field flattener so yes we've got a decent size uh, wide field sort of view which makes it brilliant if I want to take um, deep sky objects which are quite large and uh, like good ones like for example if we select Orion Nebula is a good one here we can just fit the entire Orion Nebula and the Running Man in one picture and again if you select another deep sky object a really good firm favorite is Andromeda Galaxy with that picture there Andromeda Galaxy fits perfectly in that field of view so you have no problems imaging ST102 with the field flatten and focal reducer not a problem you'll get the entire galaxy in there so that is good to know so this Civ Bonnie and uh, field flattener and focal juicer is ideal for large deep sky objects another way to calculate it is if we go to CCD suitability this is another way to check if you're under or over sampling and again you select your scope alright try to find it I found it before there we go there's a, there's a telescope select the sieve body then you're going to select the camera again very crucial find the correct camera to suit the uh, the telescope setup and as you can see there with OK seeing I'm slightly over sampled and it does state that this combination leads to slight under sampling this reduces the influence of guiding errors and improves signal to noise at the expense of finest detail so it's okay for most deep sky imaging purposes so in a way this is okay if you're slightly over some but if you're slightly under sampled but um, normally most sky conditions are usually poor seeing all the time so again as you can see there if you've got poor seeing then the setup actually will benefit you so if you've got really bad seeing and you're under sampled then this will give you uh, that pixel there so yes it depends on on the sky conditions now if you've got really good skies like good seeing then the undersampling 
is a lot more affected so it's a good little calculator it even has the formula on the side that tells you the pixel size and the focal length for your telescope and then you times it by 206.265 that will give you the equation to uh, give you the factor of 1 to 2 all right to work out your resolution here all right but the calculator does it all for you but it's worth interest it, it is interesting to know that this might work uh, for my telescope but we don't know yet but I'm really excited that it's not going to be too bad after all so um, I hope I show I hope this um, this website has helped you guys and girls and everyone and uh, we'll take it from there and see what we get so then everyone we've got the Save Bonnie focal reducer connected up and you can see how that mounts on the Astro Essentials focuser and as you can see it has reduced the travel a lot so I literally got 11 centimeters extension out which is good now this may work for the standard Skywatcher focuser so you'll get similar results to that but as you can see it fits nice and perfectly with the a standard m48 t-ring i don't know why you can't get a different uh, threads to adapt to the focal reducer that's something that could be looked at but you definitely need an m48 thread to fit that focal reducer now as you can see there it fits perfectly with a little bit of an extension and we're just testing it out on something at the landscape in a far distance. Now, as you can see, this is the camera now. This is what we got. So we'll just move this side. Wow, look at the field of view on that. We're in focus, and as you can see in there, we've got some fantastic results. So it's widening the field of view, we've achieved focus, but also what I like to, if I zoom in, it has actually reduced some of the chromatic aberration. Now bear in mind, I have not fitted the contrast booster on there. The boot contrast booster is here, right? So I've not fitted the contrast booster and already I've noticed, for zooming even more, it has actually reduced quite a lot of chromatic aberration to some degree. Yes, there's there's always going to be hints of it, but I must admit that is absolutely outstanding. Now I don't know if I'm using because I am using an actual modded camera. So maybe the fringing makes it a little bit worse. So what we've done, we swapped out for the standard Canon 600D. All right, this is not modded by any means. And as you can see, we're still able to achieve focus and look at the color correction. Also, what I like to highlight is I'm at ISO 100 and like, I'm on like coming down to the slowest speed ever the slowest speed and uh, I'm still getting a, a very bright image through that okay so that's really impressive results so already I'm absolutely amazed what I'm gonna do is gonna zoom in and look at the chromatic aberration. So if I up up the brightness a bit, you can see straight away, oh, wow! That is so much better colour corrected. I'm absolutely impressed. 
This is really impressive. I'm, again, I'm not using the border contrast booster. Again, this is still not connected. So already, this is a very quality, this is a high quality product. And I don't know what lenses they've used in that, but they've, they've really have color corrected a lot of that false coloring. Yes, there is some fringing. Again, it's always going to be an acromat. You're always going to get some fringing. But look at the results. And I must admit, that's baffled me. That's like almost an ED. <laughs> it's ED performance, just about. Not quite, but it's definitely, it's definitely uh, something now. It's, it's unbelievable. So, so far, I'm really impressed with this focal reducing field flattener from Civ Body. So this is with the contrast booster, with the standard DSLR camera. We're going to connect her up. Again, solidly built, and it slips on there. Let's take a closer look. Um, wow! I'm shocked. Uh, with the contrast booster, with the standard camera, that's still made an impressive results. Yes, there is some yellow tinge, which is normal with that filter, but it's almost completely eliminated some of that fringing even more. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. And as you can see, I'm just spellbound. I'm absolutely over the moon. So then we're going to connect the modified Canon 600D, right, which is the got this the Bada IR cut filter. Again, it's got the contrast booster. We're going to connect her up again. And I must admit, I love how this focal reducer and field flattener fits perfectly with the, the focuser upgrade. So we're going to check her out and see what results we get. Now, as you can see, you have to focus slightly because obviously um, with the IR filter, I don't know why that is, you have to slightly focus it just to get it sharp. Wow. Do you notice there is a pinkish U, which is normal for a modified Canon 600D? Because that's basically designed to... Um, to target for hydrogen alpha regions in the nebula. Uh, this is perfectly normal. Uh, we have to up, up it up, up the gear, the exposure time. Wow. So even with a slight pink issue, we've got some good color correction all the way through that. I'm just gonna go into normal manual mode so you see the results from there. Yeah, we've got a far, wide field of view. And uh, this is really impressive stuff. So with the contrast booster, it has improved even more. Uh, we, if we take a closer look, yeah. So despite the pinkish hue, it has colour corrected a lot of that fringing. So... Both cameras, doesn't matter if you've got a, a, a modified Canon or a normal DSLR camera, this focal reducer, field flattener, works on both types. And I'm assuming, like always, it will work for a dedicated astral camera, like a CMOS or a CCD.
guys and girls and everyone. As you can see, we've got a clear night. We've got the ST102 set up. We're also guiding. Okay, and we've got the DSLR camera at one minute's uh, exposure at ISO 800. Can't do too much of the um, exposure because we've, we've got a bit of a, um, a gibbous moon tonight, so I had to dip down the exposure. So at the moment, we're successfully guiding. And as we can see, yeah, we're guiding with that four seconds exposure perfectly. And uh, I'm not too fussed about RMS rating and all that. I'm not too fussed. As long as I'm guiding, that is it. You don't need to do anything else other than focus on getting the image. And also, I only got like two hours of uh, exposure time, uh, two hours of uh, clear skies. So it's very important that I smash those photons out. Now, we're going to have a, a good close look. And uh, at the moment, if I dim down the exposure, so yeah, at the moment we've we've got the camera pointing at the Rosetta Nebula uh, or Rosetta Nebula, whatever you want to call it, and um, which is NGC two two four four or the Cadwell forty nine. Okay, so that's what we're doing at one minute's exposure time. We're guiding perfectly. The HEQ5 mount yeah, it's been a fantastic mount so far. Really happy with the results. It actually is working a lot better than my EQ5 mount. So um, I'm really chuffed to bits with the uh, HEQ mount so far. But... Um, Luckily we get some good data and uh, we're going to take a closer look. So before we do anything, I'm just going to screw this poloscope back in there because I don't like to have anything that's exposed because it's a very dewy night. So uh, got to be very careful. Like, all right, trying, I haven't got a dew heater, which is a real shame. So it's going to play some havoc. So at the moment, we're taking the shot. Right, and what we'll do is, I will go and get, grab my controller. Just bear with me. There we go. So we're going to cancel that and uh, we're just going to check that image. Just bear with me. Check the image. Wow. As you can see, let me just focus. So if you just dim down that. As we can see, we have got the Rosette Nebula. And I must admit, it's looking, oh, look at that. That was only less than 40 seconds. And I've already got the whole region in there. So if we uh, scroll down some of the images. Like so. Yeah. So let me just dim down that. Wow, we've got the entire structure in the center. This is fantastic results. So one minute's exposure time and I've got the whole region in there. That is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, just one minute's exposure time. I've got everything in there. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. So now what we're gonna do is because I've got the data 
All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take loads of those shots as much as I can and keep smashing that data. All right, so it's, it's, it is very crucial to get this because I don't have much time left. So the whole idea is I'm going to get as much data as I can at one minute's exposure at ISO 800 and just keep on going taking those awesome shots and uh, I'll catch you in a bit guys and girls from a great great time now with the ST 102 I'm absolutely amazed at the results that we got off on the uh, rosette nebula absolutely outstanding and uh, what I can't believe is I've managed to get it with all the detail within just a minute's exposure time so what we're doing now is we're going to image uh, a few galaxies because it's galaxy season these galaxies will appear very small through the through the Canon 600D but what we're trying to achieve is can this acromat match uh, the potential usage of uh, obviously ticking galaxies again this refractor being f3.9 is is not really suited for uh, galaxies that are because they are very tiny and very small through a wide field scope however uh, what I'm trying to image is the the Leo triplets and uh, using the same settings ISO 800 one minute's exposure time all right we're already guiding really well as well straight away no questions asked the skies are looking a bit um, dubious at the moment. Seeing is actually got, got worse. So I'm guessing we're getting passing cloud coming through. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a close look of the uh, of the triplets. We have got something. So what we'll do is I'll cancel that. Cancel exposure and show you what we actually got. So I'm going to dim down the camera so that you can see what we got. So far, I'm absolutely over the moon with this, and uh, let me just. Bear with me, <laughs> as I'm a little bit struggling, so I just need a bit of light so I can see what I'm doing. Right, so I'm just going to check the last picture. And as we take a closer look yes we've got the triplets oh wow that is absolutely amazing they're tiny they are really tiny but we managed to get all three of them almost in the center you can't you can just make out what they are the shape you know these are really tiny galaxies but managed to get it quite quite well in there but uh, you can just see them now through there if we just zoom in if I can just see if I can focus in there yeah you can see them now with a particular the yeah you can see them to the, to the 65 66 then you got the cigar galaxy as well there around the side 
absolutely amazing so we managed to get all the detail there of the triplets i'm absolutely over the moon with that absolutely really chuffed the bits so what we're going to do is just keep on banging those exposures all right like so and uh just gonna keep at it so wish me luck and let's keep shooting those photons Well, 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 guys and girls and everyone, we just captured a few data on the triplet galaxies and we are quickly shifting over to the gobular cluster, which is the great Hercules gobular cluster. And the uh, reason for that is because the clouds are starting to move in, so I'm trying to get as much data as possible. Uh, before it's totally, before I'm totally whitewashed, and as you can see there, all right, it is quite low in the sky, but we're going to get that data as quick as we can. Again, same settings, ISO 800, and uh, and uh, like I say, at just one minute exposure time as well. All right, I just want to show to you guys and girls what this telescope can deliver and uh, I must admit I'm absolutely thrilled to bits of this telescope it really has been quite an amazing adventure and as you can see we just got the uh, gobbler cluster like I said what I'll do is um, I will cancel that frame so that you guys and girls and everyone else can see what I've got. So we just flick over. It will appear very small, but what I wanted to show you is what you can get. So come on, focus. As you can see there, Wow, we got it. Yes, we've got it. Right bang on in the center. And uh, we're going to keep continue getting that data before the clouds move in. When the clouds move in, then I'll start to taking dark frames at the same settings of ISO 800 and one minute exposure time. And I've got a lovely picture there of the Hercules great plus cluster gobular cluster uh, the moon is coming up that's the reason why I've cancelled the triplet galaxies because they're starting to get whitewashed and this is the ideal opportunity to get one last diesel before I'm going to be absolutely um, yeah well yeah what can I say guys and girls what can I say this is absolutely amazing stuff. I mean, uh, it just shows you that one simple modification like this can transform your telescope into something, especially that's within the budget. And uh, I just can't believe what I've got. It really is outstanding. And uh, that. For that focal reducer and fuel flattener from Sim uh, Bonin is absolutely spectacular, really is. And I've had an amazing night. I'm so happy I've managed to get three good diesels with some decent frames. When I final process them, like, I'll see what I get. But again, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this video please hit a like button okay because end of the day i'm doing a lot of hard work to show and prove to you guys and girls 
and everyone that this is hard work. But right? what I'm trying to show you guys that you know this isn't easy trying to uh, do all this, but I'm sacrificing my own time, imaging time, so that I'm just making sure that you see what I get to encourage people, particularly that's new into astronomy, and like disprove this, this like, yeah, you have to buy decent equipment. But again, what I'm trying to show to you guys and girls is that budget equipment like this is just as good as professional equipment, right? And uh, as you can see in those images, these are absolutely amazing. So, again, just please hit that like button. And uh, I'm going to take more of these images. And uh, we're just going to keep going. Well, 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 guys and girls, <laughs> what do you reckon? I must admit, everyone else, right? I'm absolutely out. I'm absolutely blown away. I really am. And I wish to thank Bottle Six Astrophotography to highlight this amazing upgrade from Ziv Bonnie. Now, Ziv Bonnie, with this focal reducer that's only designed for their variant of refractor, which is an ED refractor at F7, I didn't think this was going to work. I must admit, I'm absolutely impressed with the results. 
think about it, guys and girls and everyone. You've got to think, yes, you spend probably £100 for this upgrade. But what a fantastic upgrade. Yeah, you know, I've just turned this F5 into a, a super fast F3.9 focal length, which is absolutely amazing. And I've still achieved focus and so quick. In fact, it's that quick for something that's budget. This setup is quicker than the, if, if you can remember, I did a video back a while back and that was the, the telescope service 115 millimeter refractor and I, I managed to do the upgrade to put a 0.6 times focal reducer and with that I managed to achieve super fast f4.1 however this budget telescope beats it in speed wise performance I can't believe I'm picking out so much detail on those deep sky objects super fast which is a real winner and a fantastic piece of equipment the focal reducer and fuel flattener from Civ Bonnie. I'm actually quite amazed by its optical build quality how it's how it's built as well it's it is a good quality product and um, I didn't think like this was going to work or achieve focus but I thank Bottle 6 Astrophotography for suggesting this idea and I wish that again please check out his video and my video and share this superb little upgrade and even though it's not really designed for this type of telescope it certainly does work and I got a huge wide field of view able to fit quite a lot of deep sky objects larger deep sky objects in the field of view with super fast performance ironically I'm actually quite amazed that it's actually colored corrected better through that focal reducer I'm actually quite shocked that it actually helped to improve not only the sharpness but help to color correct a lot of the false coloring because again I have used the contrast booster it does eliminate some of it but like as you can see there when I was testing it out I was actually quite amazed how good it was without the contrast booster point to note you will get a hint of false coloring when you take longer exposure of the deep sky objects but it's reduced quite a bit so if you want to completely eliminate it or almost eliminate it then you have to use that Barda contrast booster filter without a doubt and you will get that yellowy effect but what can I say a budget refractor very capable of taking some decent images please everyone try it out yourself you've seen the video you see how it performs and again please hit that like button because again I'm sure this has helped quite quite a lot of people people don't know about this hardly anyone but I'm actually quite amazed with that focal reducer I'm just like absolutely shocked that something that's not designed for this telescope but it's designed for an ED refractor of that particular brand yes I would say £100, but I was lucky I managed to get it for sale for £101. But usually it retails through Amazon £119. But look at the bill of quality on the Civ body. I'm actually quite shocked. They've actually have upped the game on the products. And uh, it just shows you that you do get other manufacturers are competing against each other even with the top leading brands now I'm going to be honest with you guys and girls there are loads of telescopes and believe it or not they're all very similar built and they're built in one factory just different brand names and again I am not sponsored by Civ Bonnie 
or any other company by any other means, this is the product that I personally have bought myself, took out the risk from someone who's given me some recommendations. I've listened to, to what they have to say about it. And I'm glad because now I've got something that's absolutely outstanding. A refractor, very capable of decent images with slight false colouring. Again, you cannot escape from that through an acromat. You're always going to get it. If you want to get colour free and, and away from fringes, then ED and Apple all the way. But for people like you and everyone else that's on a budget, I think this is a good idea opportunity to get yourself one of those focal reducers because they're selling out really quick. And I'm sure that this video will help you boost your confidence knowing that this is going to work for you out, work out for you guys and girls. Bear in mind, you can use that focal reducer with your bog standard Skywatcher focuser, all right? So if even with that, uh, you know, a normal focuser from Skywatcher is okay. But it, again, you've got a lot of weight on one side. So the Astro Essentials focuser upgrade is definitely a must for this telescope if you want to keep within that weight and also make it more robust. But what can I say? But from that on, would I recommend this Civ Bonnie focal reducer field flattener? I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of Civ Bonnie because of certain things I have reviewed in the past and uh, wasn't particularly happy about it. But this product is definitely a, a must. And I'll definitely give this a five star rating. I wish it could be a little bit cheaper, but it is a good quality product. And I'm actually quite amazed how it's color corrected some of the false coloring on this telescope. I cannot grumble. But again, it's, I'm just, I'm just absolutely amazed how much it's performed. It's just absolutely staggering. So feel free to use this video or check out Bolt 6 Astrophotography, his channel. He's done a similar setup. He's got the same setup as this. And he's even taken astral pictures with it as well, without the contrast boost, of course. But it's very interesting results to compare each, other, each other's results. All right. All right. End of the day, I'm backed up with his evidence. And now what I found with my evidence that this is definitely an awesome little upgrade, highly recommended. And again, the description below for that product. Again, just check it out and order one today. So if you've got the one or two, see if it works out for you. Now, I'm gonna say, and I'm not gonna, it's not highlighted in stone, but I have got the ST80. Now the ST80, again, is a short tube acromat, and it's an F5. There is a focal reducer and fuel flattener for uh, the Civ Bonnie 80 millimeter F7 ED refractor. Now, again, the link's down below for that one. I might be certain, but I can't guarantee it, but I'm certain it might work out for the ST80. So if you've got the ST80, there is a field flattener from Civ Bonnie Check out the link below. Again, you'll get similar performance with the F 3.9 ratio, which is really fast. Again, I'm not quite sure if that's going to work, but again, I've, got, I've run out of cash, so I can't buy this product because obviously that's how it is with my hobby, is I have to save my earned out cash. I, obviously, I'm not sponsored by anyone, so I'm going to have to wait a while and see if it works for the SD80. But again, I've got to save cash. It's just the way it is. If you've bought one for the SD80, please let me know in the comments below. So if you have got the SD80 and you have bought the S, the, the Civ Bonnie Focal Reduce and Fuel Flattener, please comment below and see share your experiences if it has worked out for you as well. So again, this video does cover the ST102 
and the SC80. So check again, let me know how you got on and just put in the comments below and see if you, it has worked out for you. So if you order the Civ Bonnie, I would be very interested in how that, how that worked out for you. So that concludes my video. Please hit a like button. And again, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe onto my channel. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell. By hitting that bell and selecting all, will keep you notified for any new videos coming out very, very soon. So, thanks again. Thanks for watching. And I wish you all clear skies.